name is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, My Very Good Friend, Albert. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Tonight's presentation, the field of autology, the science of the human ear. The object in point, a specimen of human bone about the size of a grain of rice. The case in point, Albert Eric Olofsson. Five years ago, he left his native city of Gothenburg, Sweden, and came to the United States. By occupation, he's a musician. By affliction, he's a shy and lonely bachelor. His greatest hope is to make friends, to join the crowd. But circumstance has placed him in a bewildering dilemma because his greatest hope is also his greatest fear. Well, this is Albert Olofsson, and this is the strange world which he occupies. Not a strange world by standards of sight, that much is normal, but a world made strange by sound, distant and muted sound, deadened and smothered, as you hear it now, as Albert hears it. suspicious world, eternally whispering and mumbling, a cold, dishonest world that refuses to speak up and make itself heard. This is the story of one man's journey through that world. Albert. I'm sorry, Albert. We all talked it over. It just doesn't work. You're back so soon. You practice on a little bit today? They say you come back soon. You practice just a little bit today. There's no more music. There's no more job. What? They should fire you? Just thinking all the years I'm together with it. Now let's push it aside. Forget it. Put it in corner. Let dust come down over it. Cover it. Forget everything. Best to forget. There is other jobs, other ways to have good time. To play the music is not everything. No. Not everything. It's good time you need, Albert. Tonight, I would go down to the Paradise Park. Me and my good friend, Della Lisa. You will come with us, yeah? No. But you like the Paradise Park. Always you go there. You say all the loud noise. You like it. So easy to listen. Della Lisa has a friend to bring for you, Mrs. Stendhal. <gasps> Very nice, Mrs. Stender. No new people. Always they mumble, mumble, mumble. They ask questions, they, they listen wrong, they make stupid answer. Always they laugh, they know. Oh, they do not laugh. It's only in your head. 
You will come with us. Yeah, you and the Mrs. Stendhal. No. Anyway, needs be we go to gymnasium tonight. Our lessons for the U.S. citizenship. Tonight? Tuesday. Class for U.S. citizenship every Tuesday night. All right. Then we go down to the Paradise Park after the lesson in the U.S. citizenship. It's good. So all these things, together with the true American spirit of the populace, the spirit of fair play and free enterprise and liberty and justice for all. All these have convinced me that Fresno, California is the place to live. We salute you, Fresno. Fresno, California, the pride of the USA. Just in time. Now remember the assignment for next week, please. The Declaration of Independence and the men who signed it. Mr. Olufsen, I hope you don't mind. I don't mean to be a busybody, Mr. Olufsen, but about your hearing. Don't you think it would be a good idea if you'd go to a doctor and have him examine your ears? They don't know some doctor. Well, suppose I give you the name of the doctor who helped my brother Tom. They don't think there's any good. There's no use. Well, I'll just jot down his name and address in any case. Now, you give this some serious thought. Promise? Yeah, I promise. Mrs. Jackson? Yes? The lady sitting over there. Oh, you mean Frederica Swenson? A very nice girl. Yeah. Is she Norwegian, you know? Norwegian? No, I'm afraid I don't know. Is she being with husband, you know? You mean, is she married? No, she's still single. Why do you ask? Uh, there's nothing. Good night, Mrs. Jackson. Good night, Mr. Olus. <laughs> Albert is so often was alone, hearing another and more disturbing voice. Suppose I give you the name of the doctor who helped my brother Tom. The doctor who helped my brother Tom. Will you give this some serious thought. Promise. Some serious thought. Promise. The doctor who helped me. The doctor who. The doctor. The doctor. The doctor. Before noon the following day, Albert Olufsen is in the office of Dr. Harold Carnes, autologist. In attendance, nurse Dorothy Cronin. Preliminary examination places emphasis on the teeth and tonsils. Dental caries well filled. Tonsils out. Would you step this way, please, Mr. Olufsen? Then follows the Weber test. Tuning fork is placed against the forehead to check the balance of hearing between the right and left ear. Weber test heard in the midline. The next stage is the audiometric tests. First, a set of earphones is adjusted to the patient's ears and he is asked to listen carefully. A sample tone is given him like this. The patient is then asked to raise his right index finger each time he hears the tone. After each tone, the decibel reading is reduced until at some point the patient fails to respond. So the world of Albert Olufsen, the strange world of whispers and mumblings, entertains a new visitor. The electronic tone of the audiometer probes the depths of the passageway for sound. The delicate membranes, the vibrating network of tiny bones laced together with ligaments the thickness of a hair, 
own forces each of them to work as hard as it possibly can. Forces them to reveal their strength or their weakness. Strength or weakness which is immediately translated into a series of numbers, charts, graphs. 50 dB loss at 500. 40 dB at 1,000. 50 dB at 2,000. The second part of the test is for bone conduction to find out if the nerve of hearing is able to carry the sound sensations to the brain. Step by step, the electronic tone probes deep into the cavity of hearing, exploring, charting, measuring. Somewhere in the intricate maze of bone and tissue, the answer lies. The tone keeps searching. In the case of Albert Olofsson, it is clear that he is suffering from otosclerosis, a hardening of the ear. The physician makes a point of explaining this to the patient with the aid of a fairly simple diagram of the human ear. He demonstrates how sound strikes the eardrum, setting up vibrations that are transmitted over the three bones of hearing. The third and final bone is called by reason of its shape, the stirrup. This is where Albert Olofsson's trouble lies. But a closer look is necessary to make the delicacy of the treatment fully apparent to the patient. Actually, this whole section is, is very small. It's about the size of a grain of rice, a small grain of rice. Grain of rice. Now, this membrane around this foot plate has become calcified. It's become hardened by a bony growth. So it can no longer vibrate and send sound sensations to the hearing nerve. You have something will help, some operation? It's what we call the fenestration, or the window operation. Here, let me show it to you. First, we make an opening or a window in this bone right here. We take a piece of skin from the ear canal and place it over the new opening. This way, the new membrane picks up the sound vibrations directly, passes them on to the hearing nerve, and practical hearing is restored. And with this, I can hear the music again? According to the tests we've made, your hearing nerves in good working order. I'd say there were three chances in four the operation will give you good, practical, and permanent hearing. Seventy-five percent. That's right. It doesn't bother you, does it? Seventy-five percent? No, it's not bothering. Other twenty-five percent? Yeah, that is bothering. This book from doctor is saying here, operation is a very delicate major surgical procedure. And here, operation is not without risk, uh -huh, you see. Sometimes it's walking across street. That is taking risk too. Maybe you'll be such smart fella on this one. Say, after operation, maybe you hear good. Then six months go by, a new opening in the ear bone maybe closes up. You don't hear any more. And money? Where is money for operation? Hospital? Rich man, Albert Olafson. Where is fault to paying bills? Before leaving, he tell Dr. Little Money. He says you want operation, you should have operation. Something we work out, he says. One way or some other. They don't know. Rich man, Albert. Stupid man, Albert. What for are you thinking? thinking what I will do. Yeah, is what? I will have operation. So it begins. It's more than a mere probing with an electronic tone. The target is the size of a grain of rice. There's little margin for error because to one side only fractions of an inch away lies the cavity of the brain. The instrument is poised, the goal is in sight. A new opening for sound. A new window to a new world. 
First day post-operative. Patient moderately dizzy with slight nystagmus afebrile. Post-operative. Patient remains afebrile. Eating well. Dizziness decreasing. No nystagmus. Patient states he now hears less than before surgery. Fifth day, post-operative. Patient ambulating well. Dizziness subsiding. Patient continues to note full feeling in operated ear and echoing sensation. Gauze packing removed. Dressing removed. Patient is ready to leave the hospital. Hearing the comb, the comb is hearing. Is hearing something more? Water, his sound of water. It is water. This is water. is sound. It is hearing. What is that? It is the city. Oh, God, thank you. A simple walk down a familiar street is filled with the wonder of sound. is going crazy or what? He's saying it again, Gustav. I hear you good. Sounds very good. Talk some more. Maybe six months. Go back. He's talking too loud now. Maybe six months you're not hearing so good. You don't talk like now. Yeah, might be so. Just six months is not so very bad. Better than nothing. So the escape is made. Albert Olofsson is free of the strange world which held him fast behind a barrier of bone no larger than a grain of rice. So Albert waits and hopes and listens. For if he is the one who must return, he'll go back to his prison with a store of fresh memories. But the escape is not complete. For every 20 persons who escape from the world of deafness, one of them must return. In one of the 20, the new opening, the new window of sound slowly closes after surgery. A second opening can be made, but there's every likelihood that too will close. Six months are drawing to a close. Albert Olofsson has gradually become accustomed to the world of sound and of music. Only one step remains for him fully to take up his life again.
Hello? Yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah. They will come, yeah. His concert maestro, down at Symphony Hall. So? Last week is playing for him. See if maybe chance to get my job back. So he's what? Come tomorrow. Rehearsal. Hey, get it back, Gustav. With orchestra. Hey, get my job back. <laughs> <laughs> sound. Hey, I'm not hearing. There's your trouble right there. He's all right. He's hearing again. This plaque, corny of wax, it formed right over the new opening, cut off the hearing. Probably been accumulating in there for the last few days. Is all right? Is, is nothing to worry about? Nothing to worry about. Oh, I don't have your chart handy. It's been almost six months since your operation, hasn't it? It is exactly six months. September 9th. September 9th. About three weeks to go. Well, I guess you'd better be getting along to your appointment. If you have any more difficulties like this, be sure and let me know. It's thanking you very much, Doctor. Everything you do for me. If, if I could only show you. If I could do something only. There is something you can do for me, Mr. Olipson. In another three weeks, I hope, you'll be leaving deafness behind you. Don't ever forget the people who have to remain deaf. Remember how it was for you. Remember how it has to be for them. Tell your friends about it. Tell them what it was like. Tell everybody you know. There's someone who wrote it better than I could say it. The sense of hearing is a gift. It's a great gift. Those who have it, be thankful. And toward those who haven't, be patient. Tell them you understand. Yeah, I understand. Miss Svensson? Mr. Olafson. I was wondering, are you Norwegian? Yeah, that is right. Why? It is nothing. It is helping with, with your books, maybe? Thank you. It's so nice tonight. Maybe you would like to go out someplace. It's nice for you to ask me. Where maybe you'd like to go? Well, there is the Paradise Park. All the lights and everything. We find better place. Paradise Park, very noisy. Too much noise. We go now? <laughs> 